and welcome to the next video in my series on system software. Today we're going to be looking at interrupts. So sometimes an event occurs that demands immediate CPU attention. So for example, when the user moves the mouse, the mouse cursor displayed on screen needs to move accordingly. Or when a program has frozen and the user presses Control Alt Delete on a Windows platform to bring up the task manager. They need this to happen straight away, to interrupt whatever was happening and come up. Therefore, the CPU needs to know when a device or software needs its attention urgently. I'm going to be looking at two ways of doing this, polling and interrupts. Let's start with polling. I've got a nice animated GIF here just to give you a bit more information. But basically, the CPU stops at a regular interval to check with every connected device if an action of the CPU is required. This is a very inefficient method since checking takes up substantial processing time. Polling is when the CPU keeps checking each peripheral to see if it needs attention. This is a waste of the CPU's time. Imagine if a teacher were to ask every single student in the class if they had any questions continuously throughout a lesson. Waste too much time. Interrupts, on the other hand, is the, this is the alternative. This is when a device or software sends a signal to the processor to get attention when it requires it. This is similar to what happens in most classrooms, where a student will put up their hand if they have a question, and then the teacher will ask them what that question is. An interrupt will have a priority indicating how urgently it requires attention. When an interrupt is raised, the operating system runs the relevant interrupt service routine, or ISR. There are two main different types of interrupt. Hardware, when a peripheral device needs attention, or software. For example, an application terminates or needs some input-output, uh, software timers, exceptions such as div division by zero, etc. So if we take a closer look at ISRs. When a peripheral or software routine requires attention, an interrupt is raised to tell the CPU. Although technically, the software interrupts are raised with the OS kernel first, before it obviously gets anywhere near the CPU. Each interrupt has a priority level. If its priority level is higher than the process currently being executed, it needs to be serviced first. It needs to interrupt. The operating system has interrupt service routines that determine what happens when a particular interrupt is carried out. So at the end of each iteration of the fetch decode execute cycle, the processor checks to see if there have been any interrupts. So this is stuff that we know, an instruction or data is fetched from memory, uh, any instructions are decoded, the instructions are executed, and then before it fetches the next instruction, the CPU needs to check if there are any interrupts it needs to deal with. If there are any interrupts, and they're of higher priority than the current task, then the following steps are carried out. The contents of the program counter and the other registers are copied to an area of memory called the stack. The relevant interrupt service routine can then be loaded by changing the program counter to the value of where the ISR starts in memory. When the interrupt service routine is complete, the previous value of the program counter and the other registers can be restored from memory to the CPU. This process is sometimes called a context switch. This is a procedure that a computer CPU follows to change from one task or process to another while ensuring that the tasks do not conflict. So in brief, this is copying all the registry data to the stack, jumping to the first address of the interrupt service routine. So we show you a quick animation here. So we've got the idea that the computer is working away on a task. 
the next location of of an instruction in memory is held in the program counter in this case 1001 when an interrupt service routine is flagged so what happens well all the values from the register have to move to the stack so in this animation it's just the program counter but this would include all the other current values from the registers then the first instruction of that relevant interrupt service routine get moved into the program counter so we can start the process of fetching decoding and executing whatever instructions are required when that's all dealt with we can pop whatever's on the stack all those register values can go back into place and then we can continue or the cpu can continue from where it left off processing the previous set of instructions It is, of course, possible that while one interrupt is being serviced, another of higher priority will be raised. And in fact, this happens quite a lot while your computer is running. In this case, the interrupt currently being serviced is added to the stack in memory, and the new interrupt is serviced. So the interrupt was interrupted. And that interrupting interrupt could also be interrupted in the future. Once this new interrupt is finished, assuming it hasn't been interrupted too, the previous interrupt is taken off the stack and continued before it goes back to the original process. So again, let's take a look at that in the animation. We have an interrupt being raised, so all the values from the registers are copied to the stack. We run the relevant interrupt service routine, but while this is happening, another interrupt occurs. It has a higher level of priority. Therefore, the previous interrupt service routine and all that related register values are copied to the stack. We now run the next interrupt. When it's finished, we can pop the values off the stack for the previous interrupt service routine, handle that interrupt. And then when that's dealt with, we can go back to the original process and continue. there can be some problems with interrupts. Because handling interrupts is a bit like juggling. As long as everything runs smoothly, it is a fine method. But there are two main problems. One, responding quickly enough, what we call latency. So for example, a real-time car computer will be dealing with thousands of interrupt requests per second as the engine brakes, throttle input output devices demand attention. You need a skilled engineer to write computer code that can deal with this situation so that every interrupt is handled with time. So remember in previous lessons we looked at real-time operating systems, handling interrupts in a real-time operating system is a complicated business. The other possible error is a stack overflow because there are too many interrupts. The idea here happens is you keep getting more and more interrupts, the stack gets full, that can cause problems with other areas of memory and the computer could crash. Stack overflows are things you generally want to avoid. So sometimes a simple polling system that we discussed right at the start of this lecture is the way to go for low demand situations to avoid tricky interrupts. But generally most modern systems, its interrupts are the way to go because although they do have potential problems, uh, they're a lot more efficient for system resources. That's all from me today. Good luck with your studies, and I'll see you in the next video.